What's up YouTube? It is your boy JB and we are here today with a review for Real Housewives of New York City. This is season 13 episode number three and the episode was titled A High Rate of Interest. Alright <laughs> you guys, without further ado let's get into review. Actually before we do that if you guys are watching this video or any of the other videos on my channel and you're not subscribed what are we why 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 are you taking me out on a date finessing me all oh, it's a stiff me at the end of the day hit that subscribe button it's free hit that subscribe button hit that notification bell button so you guys are notified when i drop any videos and hit that like button but with that being said, let's go ahead and actually talk about The Real Housewives of New York City. All right, you guys. So, Real Housewives of New York City. This is episode number three. I will say so far this season is a bit of a slow burn, but I'm sticking with it. But it's it's a slow burn. It's definitely a slow burn. I don't feel like anything is going to happen until next week when Heather joins the group. But we will see. So, this episode, the beginning of the episode was actually kind of a little boring to me we saw Ramona and Sonia Sonia talking about Leah and Ebony at Burning Man's party and how Leah opened up about her grandmother and then you know Ebony did the same thing which was new because she's new to the group and she doesn't really know them but she felt comfortable enough to open up to them now while Sonia was in there talking Ramona was in the bed you know, Sonya was talking about his Ramona's dog did. I'm like, hell, is Ramona did? This is a joke, you guys. Because Ramona and Coco were both laying there like this. Not moving. I was just like, did Ramona blink? Did she do anything? Because I just couldn't tell. So then we have Ebony. So Ebony is talking to Lou about <laughs> Ramona as well. And you guys remember in the last episode, Ebony felt some type of way about Ramona calling child what is her name what was it Shh, don't get me calling a woman by the wrong name it's either Michelle or it's Diana I think it's Michelle because I think she was calling her Diana when she called Michelle the help and we, you know Ebony felt some type of way about that I saw somebody on Twitter ask the question why is she triggered by that the fuck why is she triggered by that? Because for years, white people, no shade to my white people, but for years, white people have had Hispanic, Hispanic people and black people as their, you know, as their, the help. And when it comes to the help, it's typically people that they look down upon. Go watch, you know, just just do your history. Go watch. Actually, I'll tell you a good movie to go watch. The Help. Go watch that movie. And you see how they treated those women that were in their houses, you know, cooking, cleaning. Based sometimes, and, and in some instances, raising their kids for them. Go watch that movie and then you'll understand why Ebony felt the way she felt. Just saying. So, you know, um, Ebony says that, you know, she'll talk to Ramona when they get to the wine tasting that they're going to. We're gonna talk about that wine tasting in just a minute. Um, but she explained to her, you know, why she felt the way she felt about Ramona calling the woman the help. And we find out that Leah's grand not Leah, but Ebony's grandmother was at one point a a housekeeper. That's what we'll say. We'll say a housekeeper. Cause that's that's better than the help. She was a housekeeper. She was in, you know, in, in that in that um, that line of work. Was my grandmother in that line of work? Y yes, and uh, well, yeah, I think so. In a hospital, but whatever. Let's move on. So Leah, Leah's sense of style this season is worse than it was last season. I still like Leah. I'm trying to figure out what Leah is wearing in her interview look. I don't know what that is. I would have preferred it if she, you know, the outfit that she wore when she went into Ramona's room, that was better. Even though Ramona was like, she looked like she's going on a safari. I would have preferred that look over what she's wearing in her interview look. It's atrocious. 
Um, so then the lady, like I said, the ladies are going to a winery. So actually, this is something that Lou set up. So Lou is telling the ladies what they're gonna do. They're gonna go to the winery. They're gonna go shopping. Then they're gonna go out to a a bar for dinner. Now, Lou confuses me. <sighs> Lou confuses me. So we all know Lou said that she's not drinking, right? Why is Lou taking the ladies to a winery? If I'm refraining from drinking, I'm not going to take my friends. And if I, and I, if I still feel tempted by it, I'm not going to take my friends somewhere that I feel tempted to drink. But you know what? This is the show. We know that the women are going to drink. I just question that. So Lou has her mock rosé and she has a wine glass. We'll talk about that in a little. We'll talk about the. I'll talk about the rosé and the wine glass a little later. Um. So while they're doing that, Ebony brings up the help comment that Ramona made. She explains to Ramona why she felt the way she felt, and it felt at first like Ramona was being completely. Di Actually, it don't. It didn't feel. Ramona was being dismissive at first. She was being very dismissive because she didn't want to address it then and there. When have y'all ever had a problem addressing anything? But okay, I'm gonna play along with you, Ramona. So then, Leah. I love Leah. I really do. So Leah is basically beating a dead horse with a stick when it comes to Ramona and this whole plasma thing, which we all know Ramona lied. Come on, let's be honest. Ramona lied about the plasma because Ramona kept going in circles, in circles, in circles, in circles, in circles, and then she said, "I gave, I talked to, I told it to the press." What the hell does that mean? But whatever. <laughs> I'm laughing, you guys, because when Sonya and um, Ramona went off, the, off of that walk and that man told Sonya that her body looked good, the shade producers, they panned in on the back of that man's head, which had a huge ass bald spot. Could not get over that at all. It was the bald spot for me. It took me out. Oh, wow, this really ain't that much in, in this episode. Oh, that's sad. Cause that's the end of my notes. That's not, not what I just talked about. That's not the end of it. I'm getting to the end of my notes. But let's move on. All right, so now we're at the end of my notes. And I'm gonna stretch this out just a little bit. So we all know that Luann has a new guy named Garth. So on their way shopping, actually let's talk about before shopping. <laughs> when Ramona went to the bathroom and she told Luann she had diarrhea, I cracked up. And then when Leah was talking about her IBS in her interview, it was hilarious to me. You know, when it comes to Ramona, Ramona doesn't like to be called to the carpet. That's why she got up and walked away. You knew you were lying. That's why you got up and walked away. So back to the ladies. They're on their way shopping. And remember, I mentioned Garth. So this is the new guy that Luann is having sex with, I guess. They, what, what is, I don't know, you know, Lou is having fun with Garth. Now, when they're talking about Garth, I know, I, I couldn't help but notice that Sonya felt some type of way. And I was just like, what's this? Is, does Sonya want Garth? Does she want Lou? Does she want both Lou and Garth? What's up, Sonya? Let me know. So, um... They do talk about Heather at one point. They talk about the fact that Heather, when they went shop, because they went to two different stores. So in one store, they were talking about Heather, how she's getting ready to come up. And, you know, like, I think it was last week's episode where Leah was talking about Heather, the fact that Heather has had some negative things to say about Sonya and about Lou. Now, I never, I didn't hear it. I don't, you know, I didn't really keep up with what they were doing outside of, you know, doing when they were filming. But we'll talk about it. What else do we have to talk about? Oh yeah, okay, that's what else we have to talk about. Just remembered it, mental note. Um. When they were out, I was confused. Cause Sonya, at this point, cause at the winery, Sonya was, she was chill. But when we get to those stores, she is lit. She's on one and she's getting, and, and she's increasingly getting drunk. 
And I'm just like, wait a minute. So do these, because I, I, I know that certain stores, when you go into them, they'll give you a glass of, you know, they'll give you a glass of wine where you can walk around and drink. Those are those upper, you know, those rich stores. But I never saw anybody with a glass. I was just like, where did this sudden change in Sonya come from? Like, homegirl is, is, at this point, she's three sheets to the wind. I'm just like, damn. That was a fast decline. Well, you know what? When they first started, you know what? They probably had been filming throughout the course of the because I noticed it was nighttime. Damn, girl. Then I also had questions about Sonya because you guys remember in last season, especially at the reunion when she was talking about the fact that she was taking some water pills and she was drinking it. So she was trying to equate that to her erratic behavior. I don't think so, Sonya. You're drunk. You might want to lay off lay off the alcohol. You know, and when you look at her, I'm she's someone that I believe doesn't know what their limit is. Like, she doesn't know her limit when it comes to drinking. And she needs to find it. Because she goes from she like she literally is at the ground floor and then she's all the way up at the sky, you know, skyscraper. It's just like, damn, how did you go from there to there that fast? But um yeah, so that's that. So that you know, they were shopping. Lou actually ended up buying uh, the, the same blouse for her, which was really nice. They both look nice in a blouse. I will say that. So then they go to the bar. Here's where my question comes in with with, with Lou, because from I know I know mainly production sets this stuff up. They look around and see where the women can film at. I do know that that's production, but the way that they plan it off on camera is as if Lou was the one that set this up. And why would you put, I mean, it's her, I get it, it's her job, she has to do it. But I don't know if, I, if I'm someone that I just decided that I don't want to drink. I don't know if I would put, I mean, I just want to put myself in a situation like that. Again, I know it was her job, but I just want to put myself in that situation. I really wouldn't. Me personally. And then, you know, she said she needed to have a cigarette. That's nasty. Just going to put that out there. Cigarette smoking to me is nasty. I've always hated it. My mom used to do it and I had a, I hate, hate cigarette smoke. Hate it with a passion. You can smoke a black and mild. You can smoke a black around me. You can smoke weed. Those are the two things you can smoke around me. But a cigarette, that is the one smell that... It actually messes with my asthma. Like, that is the one smell that just triggers my asthma so badly. Like, I can't breathe with cigarette smoke. But, um, so she also, once again, she has this wine glass and her mock rosé. I don't have an issue with her with the wine glass. I don't have an issue with that because, you know, I've drank, I've, even as a kid, you know, I wanted to feel fancy and stuff like that. And my mom used to have wine glasses. So I used to go get some, go get a little wine glass and drink out of it. So there's nothing wrong with that part. The question that I have with her is the mock rosé. I actually agreed with Leah about the mock rosé. And then she was like, but you're drinking a mocktail. Girl, this is seltzer and grapefruit juice, pineapple juice, whatever juice it is. It's that. You actually went to the store and bought some mock rosé. Like, I feel... And you're the one that's struggling with your sobriety. Why would you buy something, some fake rosé? Why would you do that? Like, I can see it if you bought some sparkling cider. Or, you know, I can see if you bought some, you know, something sparkling. I get that. But a whole fake-ass rosé? I just have a, when it comes to Lou and her, her, her sobriety, I'm not saying that she's not sober. You know what, she, she kind of gives me a bit of a Kim Richards vibe. Because you guys remember for years, Kim Richards always said that she was sober. And I always, I even, I always question Kim Richards being sober. I'm like, that's not sober. No, love, it's not sober. I, I wanted her to be sober when she was on Beverly Hills, but I'm like, that's not sober, boo. Not sober at all. But um, I just wonder why would she buy some, I mean, I... I because like Leah said, it's too close to the original, although it's not the original. Because let's just say you go down the aisle and be like, oh, there got my fake rosé and pick it up, go home, drink it. And you'd be like, damn, 
why do I have a buzz? Oh shit, this is actual rosé. Whereas if you go buy some sparkling cider, you know what, now see me personally, I don't, I, I drink, but I don't drink like that, so I can't tell you where to find fake rosé and real rosé, don't know. But I'm just saying, you know, if the bottle, if it, if the bottles look too similar, you could run the risk of actually buying the real thing. So that's my, that's what my question is when it comes to, um, to Lou. I don't get one. I, I don't care about that damn wine glass. Don't care about it. Sonia, she is a freaking hoot. So they were talking to, I don't know how they got on a conversation of dicks, but Sonia says she does not like a big dick. It's just a nuisance. And I died laughing. So remember, I said to you guys earlier that Sonia, when they went to the store, to the, to the stores, she was getting, she was, you know, she was getting less lucid at this point. She's slurring. And I'm just like, oh God, it got, it went from bad to worse. But let's back up just a little bit. So before that happened, Leah was talking about Heather and she pulled up what Leah, uh, not um, Heather said about each of the ladies. Um, she said that she, she accused Luann of being on drugs and she said, she was talking about Sonya's face. Has, you know, she liked her original face. That is shady in itself. I don't care if it, because I saw somebody on, on social media say that that was clickbait. I don't care if it was clickbait. That's still horrible. And even when people use things as clickbait, now, you know, in the interview or whatever that they use for clickbait, they do say it in there somewhere. It might be taken out of context, but they do say it. Um. So, yeah, Sonia, Ebony, and Ramona, they are talking about the Morgan family. I was like, oh my God, she needs help from that family. She needs to eradicate that family. I know that her daughter is a part of the family, but you are not. You are divorced. Let it go. Like Elsa said, let it go. I mean, because, now you see, Lou called Garth, so when Lee, Lou hung up with Garth, Sonya called some guy that works at J.P. Morgan. Then, you know, Ebony was on the phone with him. She was talking about who she got her loan through. It's through J.P. Morgan. But then Ramona was talking about how Wells Fargo is good. And I'm like, why did you say that? You can see that this, you can see that the fuse is lit on the bomb. Why would you do that? And the bomb went off when she talking about don't insult her family. Don't insult the I'm like, oh my God. Somebody get her some help. She needs therapy. Honestly, she needs therapy for the Morgan family. Because, I mean, anytime she gets drunk and someone mentions the Morgan family, she loses her shit. Then on top of that, they need to get her into Alcoholics Anonymous. Because she's an alcoholic. She's a drunk. She ain't even, I, was, I can't even say she's a functioning one at this point. She is not a functioning alcoholic. Actually, I know a functioning Actually, I don't know a functioning alcoholic. She is not a functioning alcoholic. She can semi-function. Actually, she can't even semi-function. All right, that's enough about me and my family. Um, yeah, you guys, so that's a review. I stretched it out because I want it to be a little bit longer. But so far, the season is just a slow burn. It's not giving me a lot, but we're going to definitely stick with it. And I will see you guys tomorrow. To, not tomorrow. I'll see you guys later tonight because this is Wednesday, right? Today is Wednesday, right? Yep. Today is Wednesday. So I'll see you guys tomorrow, <laughs> to later tonight for the season premiere of The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. Um, I'm looking forward to Beverly Hills. I really hope. We go deep into the Erica Girardi situation. I really hope they talk about it. You got to. You can't help but not to talk about it. But yeah, you guys, um, like this video, leave your comments in the comment section below, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell button so you guys are aware of when I drop anything else. Um, What else? As always, you guys, stay safe out there. Take care of yourselves. Remember to wash your hands. Wear a mask or not. You know, the CDC says you don't have to wear a mask. If you're fully vaccinated, you don't have to wear a mask. 
that's your decision. I choose to wear my mask. Um, what else? Stay blessed, you guys, and I will catch you guys in the next one. Once again, that is Beverly Hills Housewives, and then I'll see you guys tomorrow for Growing Up Hip Hop. And then I'll see you guys again on Friday for the week's hottest topics as well as um, Ready to Love. Oh, awesome. So, before we end this video, I want to ask everybody who, I guess I should wait for my Ready to Love video, but I know some of you guys watched all my videos, even though you might not watch the shows. Let me know in the comment section, guys. I am considering, you guys, if you guys know, I'm not big on reality shows like that. I love scripted shows. I know that there is a new scripted show on Stars, but I don't want to review it because I watched it and it just, it, it was good, but it wasn't good enough for me to sit down and have a review with you guys about Run the World on OWN. The show that I'm talking about, that I'm thinking about reviewing next season is going to be that show, I believe it's on Lifetime. It's called Married at First Sight. Is that the name of it? Y'all can let me know. I think that's the name of the show. I know that they're going to Houston, and I'm thinking about reviewing that. Let me know if you guys would be interested in that. All right, you guys, that is it, and I'm off of here officially. Bye, guys.